My name is William Blair. I'm the uh, Canada's Minister of National Defence. Um, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to be here in Brussels for the 19th Ukraine Defence Contact Group meeting, which will be taking place this afternoon. And as we approach the two-year mark of Russia's brutal and unjustified full-scale invasion of Ukraine, I am con constantly encouraged and inspired by the outstanding work of this contact group to provide Ukraine with the tools that it needs to win. And today, I'll be announcing to that group that Canada will be donating 60 million Canadian dollars to the, to the UDCG Air Force Capability Coalition for Ukraine, which is co-led by the United States, Denmark, and the Netherlands. These funds will help to secure and source much needed F-16 equipment and supplies, such as spare parts, weapon stations, avionic components, and ammunition. And this builds upon the support that we've already provided to build out Ukraine's F-16 capability. As I mentioned at last spring's uh, meeting, Canada is providing instructors, planes, and support staff to help train Ukrainian Air Force pilots in cooperation with Denmark and France. And that training is set to last from this month right through next year. More than 30 Ukrainian F-16 pilots are also undergoing language training <clears throat> excuse me, at the Canadian Forces Language School. And these efforts, together with more than the 50 allied and partner countries coordinating military aid, are intended and will help Ukraine now and well into the future. Since February 2022, Canada has committed more than $2.4 billion in military aid to Ukraine, and we will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And further, since 2015, Canadian Force members have trained more than 40,000 Ukrainian military personnel through Operation Unifier. We continue to provide airlifts of more than 15 million pounds of equipment uh, brought bound for Ukraine through Presswick in the United Kingdom. And I want to assure our allies and our friends in Ukraine that for the long term, Canada will stand with our Ukrainian friends as they bravely defend themselves from Putin's unprovoked war of aggression. We will continue to work with our international allies and partners to ensure that Ukraine has the, what they need to defend its sovereignty, its security, and their freedom. Thank you very much, and I'll happily take any questions you may have. Minister, why do you believe that what the UDCG is delivering to Ukraine is actually enough for the country? Well, we, we have the opportunity every two months to, to come together, but we are in regular contact, contact and conversation uh, with our friends in Ukraine and, and working with our allies to determine what they need to continue to defend themselves against the unprovoked aggression of, of Russia. Um, we have con continually to been made every effort to, to supply them with what they need. Um, they, they have, I think, demonstrated remarkable courage and resilience with the tools that have been made available to them. And we, but they also require our assurance that we'll continue to be there for them and to continue to support them. And that's one of the reasons that today's meeting is so important. So that we, first of all, we hear with what the situation in Ukraine from the Ukrainians. We hear very clearly what they need. And then all of the partners and allies I have continually stepped up to provide them with what they require. Minister, can we, take, can we have you take on the current discussions among European allies that they might need a nuclear shield uh, for, of their own if, uh, should uh, the U.S. drop out? There, there are very important discussions of, about taking place among all allies on, on pr precisely what capabilities are required. I'm not going to, to uh, discuss any, any particular aspect of that, but I think we are extremely well-led and, and well-supported by the, by the leadership of, of NATO and the commitment of the NATO partners to be there for each other in the, in the mutual defense of, of, of each member of, of NATO and, and particularly for Europe. And, and so those conversations are ongoing and we'll be hearing, I think, tomorrow and, and, and more extensively in conversations um, with the Supreme Allied Command in, in, in Europe exactly what is required to, to enable um, and to secure that defense. How are you handling former President Trump's threatening comments about the 2% well, I have lived next door to the United States for a long time. I tend to mostly ignore some of the political rhetoric that takes place during their elections. And I think we need to judge our, our allies, and particularly for Canada, the United States, on its long history and track record of, of being there uh, for global peace. And, and, and they are always a reliable and resilient partner. We continue to work with them. I was in Colorado Springs last week talking about a, a different alliance, which is the, the, the NORAD alliance with the United States. And for the last se oh, nearly 70 years, that has kept our continent safe. And so, um, I, I, again, you know, I, I think... We, we, we cannot be distracted from the importance of our collective responsibility to national security and national defense of our, our countries and of our alliances. 
on, on, on Middle East, how concerned are you, especially Iran, behind most of the conflict in the Middle East? Because they have so many militia there. Well, I, I, I think like all countries, we're watching with great concern about um, what is transpiring in the Middle East, particularly with the renewed uh, hostilities in the Rafah area of Gaza. We are very concerned about the, 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 the loss of, of potential loss of innocent civilian life and ensuring that aid gets there. Um, there have been, um, I, I think, un, un, un inappropriate uh, levels of pr provocation um, and, and interference by, by a number of nations. And, and I think um, uh, uh, the response um, from the United States and, and from our allies, and we are part of um, the, the group helping, part of the coalition that is responding to the attacks in, in, in the Gulf of Aden and in the Red Sea. I, I believe that that response has been at all times carefully calibrated and proportional. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.